Paul. And look at all these wonderful. Oh, Celia, how you doing, dear Mr. Foster? I know you've been at the mall all day, so I won't even ask. <laughs> Ms. Pat Robinson, the sensational, Mr. Freddie Sherman, the mother-in-law, Miss Mary. <laughs> Miss Mary Perez, Akiko, Mr. Payhan, Miss Wigan, Jabri for putting this together. Mr. John Thomas, how you doing, sir? Mr. Gerald Ransom, we got Corey Alexander from Fresno. Mr. Marvin Carter, should have been a boxer, Marvin. In the midst of the boss lady, but boss lady, Miss Marcia Carter, Miss Catherine Williams, Mr. Harrison, good to see you on. Mr. Ishmael, oh, there she is, Miss Phipps, Miss Baker. Mr. Thomas, there, the patron, Mr. Thomas. What's that? Oh, we're bringing somebody in here, bringing somebody in here. It's getting crazy. Oh, there's Mr. Navarro. Better late than narrow, right, Ed? <laughs> the Paulino family. How you doing, guys? Good to see you down there today. And Mr. Ed Navarro. Good to have you guys on, guys. Um, big weekend. I know you guys putting football aside and getting on and get trained. But uh, we got some stuff to bring you this weekend. We swing it for the fences. So, like I say, we're locked down. Not everybody, not a whole lot of people going places. Um, but here's the thing. We're at home and we have distractions like stupid crazy. Everything. And we're going to go over, we're going to go over that. But, but our main focus today is going to be called focus and being focused. Okay, so hopefully we got something here. Um, the wife and I are going to bring, I brought my sidekick, my better half. And uh, we're going to get something to you guys. So you guys want to take some notes, that's great. Um, I don't care if you take notes or not. That, that's my, my issue is put it in action. Put it to work. If you get it right here, that's fine. You're one of the, and you're the only person in the world that doesn't have to take notes, but that, that's cool. But just put it into action. So we're going to share our desktop here. We're going to get moving. So focus. Okay. That's going to be huge. So we started talking about distractions, distraction shoots, and you got to get them out of the way. So what are you guys doing to get your distractions out of the way? That's, that's the question. That's the key. If you don't get them out of the way, what happens? They're never leaving. They're always going to be there. Okay. Like Mr. Foster, I'm going to use you, boss, right now because you've been getting out of the house, focusing on what you're doing down there, and you're doing it. And what what happened? You got results. You got big results. Okay, so get out of the house. You got to go. If you can't get out of the house, go into a separate room. If, if you're home by yourself, that's different. But if you've got people there, the people, kids, they're distractions. Okay, so here's the thing, though: get your family involved. Okay, tell the kids you're going to do something with them. Tell them, hey, look, I'm going to go in the room. I'm locking the door. Don't knock. Don't talk. Don't call. Nothing. Give me 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it is. But get them involved so they're not, mom, dad. Okay, that's a distraction. I'm, I'm not trying to be mean about it, but said you got to go to work. Okay, you got, you guys want to go to Disney World this summer? Well, yeah. Okay, I got to go to work. Leave me alone. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, okay? But get them involved. No social media. No telephone calls. We're focusing on what we're doing, okay? No focus, no TV, none of that. I'm going to tell you a story in a little bit here after this, but I'm going to tell you what Rose and I did. Social media. So I'll use my wife's phones. So she's got her phone. This is phone. Take it everywhere. What did she used to have on this? Her social media. Her contacts, her everything. Phone goes, you had everything access, but she's also got a business phone. Okay. She took her social media, both of us did, took her social media off our phones that we take with us everywhere and put social media on our business phone. So it's not with us. But today we went up, we did some things today, our social media, and, and, I, and I catch myself. I go to the mall. I go, you, you go get a, your, your car worked on, tires changed or something. What do you do? You pull your phone out of your back pocket. You get on social media. Now I got no social media. She's got no social media on her phone. So what's she do? Crap, I got no social media. Let me text somebody. Let me, okay. So she gets the distractions out of the way. 
do what you've got to do. We had a guy on the team. Um, some of you, he was a while back. So his distraction was the television. He had it in his house. He had to, he could not go over and turn his TV on when he was home. That's so what do you do? <laughs> he, went over, he unplugged his TV, disconnected everything. He took his TV and he put it outside and refused to bring it back in the house because it was distraction. So what are you willing to do? What are you willing to do? So here's, this is kind of how you're keeping your distractions away from you works. And it's not just us. Okay. Everybody here know who Sir Richard Branson is. You ever heard of that guy? Mm -hmm. I think he owns like Virgin Air, uh, Virgin Mobile, Virgin Air, a whole bunch of stuff, right? No big deal, huh? So here's what's interesting. So y'all know who Darren Hardy is, the author of uh, uh, a few books, Success. Success From Home magazine he published. Um, um, Compound Effect was his book, right? Spoke at our convention several times. Phenomenal, right? So... This is a story from Darren Hardy. So he says he had a Fortune 500 company that had hired Darren as a speaker for their corporate retreat. The CEO of the company had mentioned to Darren that they were trying to get Sir Richard Branson as a keynote speaker, but they weren't having any luck getting in touch with him. So Darren told the CEO, he goes, hey, Richard and I are friends. We're homies. Let me see what I can do. I'll get back and I'll make some contact with him and, and get some things. So he asked the CEO, what do you need and what are you willing to pay? So he says, look, we want Sir Richard for an hour and a half speech and we'll give him $100,000. I'm telling you what, you call me for $100,000, I'll be there, okay? <laughs> so Darren got in touch with Richard's office, but they wouldn't let the call go through to Mr. Branson. It's the secretary who took the call, right? And the office assistant said that Richard's unavailable regardless of the reason for his call. And Darren thought, there's no way that Richard would turn down $100,000 for an hour and a half of work. So he told the assistants, tell Richard about the offer. $100,000 for an hour and a half. And the assistant immediately said, no, he's unavailable for the speech. Huh. So Darren calls the CEO back, breaks the news to him. He says, I can't believe it. He says, uh, but Richard Branson's unavailable for the speech right? The CEO, he's like, wait, what? So he says, call him back. We'll give him $250,000. So what's Darren do? Calls him back. He says he gets the assistant on the phone again, right? And she refuses to put the call through again. Darren makes the offer and she shuts him down again on the spot. He's not available for $250,000. He calls, so Mr. Hardy calls the CEO back, right? Tells him the bad news. So the CEO of the company yells through the phone, I thought you were friends with this guy. I call him back, offering $500,000 for an hour, and we'll send our private jet to go get him and immediately take him back after it's over. So <coughs> Darren's like, oh, man, that's crazy. He'll do it. So he calls you off. Once again, he was held up by the gatekeeper, he calls him now. Right, he tells you assistant the offer and the assistant immediately turns it down again. So Darren says, what the hell's going on over there? Shouldn't you at least ask Richard? The office assistant replied, no, we have been empowered by Richard to not let any calls, meeting requests or ideas through to him until he has completed the three current strategy objectives that he's working on. And a paid speaking engagement is not one of those strategies. So the story blows him away, he says, and it reminds me of my biggest downfall, Mr. Hardy says, and that is distraction. That's all of our downfalls, especially mine. I have nuclear ADD. So the difference between mediocre and mediocre, medi I got to say this word, meteoric is implementation. Take a huge lesson from Sir Richard Branson and create your strategy objective list. Narrow it down to top three, then a top one, and focus on, and do not focus on anything until that's completed. Sir Richard Branson might tell you something that we got to step up and do. 
Okay. With um, that being said. All right. So now let's go into number two, make marginal adjustments. So let me share a story with you by this gentleman. His name was Steve. And this gentleman, Steve, he struggled from kindergarten to high school. He was an average C student and the teachers always said the same thing about him that, you know, he has great possibilities if he would just settle down. Well, he made a decision his junior year in high school that he was going to try something different by making just a marginal adjustment. He would focus on studies from like maybe five to 10 minutes at a time and then stop and do something else like play basketball, draw video games, whatever, right? He did this the rest of his high school and he made the Dean's List, straight A's, and he made the President's Honor Roll. He made it to one of the top grad programs in the world and he decided to apply the same principle by doing the same thing. And he was eventually able to excel his work career to eventually become founder and CIO of two award-winning hedge funds. So he thought, hey, this works so well for my career, for my work life. Well, what if I apply this to my personal life goals? Mm -hmm. which, which, you know what it resulted him to getting? He got his auto racer license. He learned how to fly a helicopter. He learned how to rock climb. He went skydiving. He learned how to fly a plane aerobatically. He, he, lose, he lost over 25 pounds by hiking 33 miles or 33 trails in Santa Barbara mountains. He did by doing a half, he did a half mile marathon on the Tour de Peak. He was reading over 50 books in a year. He learned German. He learned how to knit, which he started wrapping massive boulders. Okay. <laughs> and eventually, he eventually uh, uh, wrapped the TMC Children's Hospital in Arizona. And then he said, I didn't really like how to uh, knit, knitting. So I started crocheting. And he found out through crocheting, he wanted to be recognized because I wonder what's the largest granny skit stitches for, for that. So he found out from the Guinness book record, there was no record on that. So he applied for it and they said, no, we don't, we're not gonna do it. So then he reapplied again. He, he tried to reverse it. They said, no, again, he reversed it. He went again. They finally said, okay, fine. If you can do a certain amount of stitch, then we'll do it. Well, guess what? He ended up with over 30 miles of yarn with half a million stitches, which took him two years, seven months and 17 days to accomplish the world Guinness book record, <laughs> the largest granny stitch. So, and now this gentleman, he's featured in Newsweek magazine and arts news for many, many of his accomplishment. This gentleman, you could actually find him on Ted talks. He does a Ted talks of this. So my, my point is, could you do 15 to 20 minute increments, three to four times a day of concentrated work. That's it. That's all he did. And he was able to make all those huge accomplishments. Okay, so let's go on to number three. All right. Track your time. Yeah, I'm not learning crochet. Okay, <laughs> track your time. What you find is how much time are you actually working? Okay, and Mr. Thomas talked about that. What do you say? Put a stopwatch around your neck, right? Darren Hardy took it a little step further. So in the compound effect, he talks about that. So when he was working real estate, 16 hours a day with marginal success. So he says, what's going on here? So then he started recording with a stopwatch, right? All the time he was working and actually producing work. Time he was physically talking to potential customers. So get this, not dialing the phone, not ring, 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 waiting for someone to answer. He didn't hit the stopwatch till someone answered on the other end of the phone. If he left a message, he left a message. No one answered the phone. He wasn't doing any work because it's, hey, call me back. Hey, see ya. Hey, this is Chris, call me back. That's not work. Not till you talked on the phone with him did he hit the stop sign or the stopwatch. So here's what it is. This ended up coming up to, this is after a 16 hour day, he thought he was working. This is why Mr. Thomas talked about to do this. He figured out he was only coming up 19 minutes and 30 seconds of actual work on average. 16 hour day. Oh, I'm putting in 16 hours. He only did 19 minutes and 30 seconds. What a drastic difference. But this just goes to show you how unproductive our daily work activities are. And although we're running around and being busy, <coughs> it's pretty useless 
when it's spent on low value tasks. Mm -hmm. Okay, you see the importance, guys? All right, now, one skill set at a time. And we Number have a- four. Huh? Number four. Number four. <laughs> All right, we have a great video for this to help understand this. And we're about a karate master. But could you focus, and we talk about this. How many, you ever hear anybody, you're getting a new IBO? Or someone's like, oh, I got to learn all the services. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got to learn all the services before I can do anything. You heard that before? Yeah. I got to know them all before I do anything. Well, here's what it is. Could you learn just one? Could you master it? Could you master an inviting script? Master a custom acquisition script? Could you learn all about ID Seal or Vivint or Flash Wire? Could you do that? Just one thing. Okay. And how do you master something? That's the question. Like, well, how do I master something? It's practice, practice, practice. And then practice recording yourself. Record yourself and send yourself to someone. Someone who's got more success, your mentor, Mr. Thomas, someone you trust, someone who knows what they're doing. Send that recording to them. Let them listen to it. And then advise you of any tweaks that you might need. So you might not need any tweaks. Man, that is good, go. That's it, Sam, you're hitting it hard. Keep doing it. Or they'll tell you like, tweak it a little bit. See, you're bringing the outside, you're bringing someone outside the fishbowl in. But focus on what you're doing and getting it right. And you just go for broke. With that being said, guys, this is mastering, uh, about mastering one thing. Can you see the? Can you see the? You guys video, see the screen? Guys? Can you see the guy in the karate suit? Yes. Okay, All right. Perfect. Here we go. This is the story of a young boy who tragically lost his arm in a devastating car accident. Years went by, but his self-confidence was left behind. One day. His parents decide it's time to move somewhere new. So while looking through some boxes, the boy came across an old martial arts magazine. And from there, he quickly signed up to study judo. The boy began lessons with an old Japanese judo master. The boy was doing well. So he couldn't understand why, after three months of training, the master had only taught him one move. Sensei, the boy finally said, shouldn't I be learning more moves? This is the only move you know, but this is the only move you'll ever need to know, the sensei replied. Not quite understanding, but believing in his teacher, the boy kept training. Several months later, the sensei took the boy to his first tournament. With everyone seated and his parents looking on, the boy surprised himself, winning his first two matches. The next proved to be a greater challenge as he appeared to be overmatched, facing a bigger, stronger opponent. Concerned for the boy's safety, the referee called a timeout. He was about to stop the match when the sensei intervened. Let him continue, the sensei insisted. Soon after, the match resumed. His opponent made a critical mistake. He dropped his guard. Instantly, the boy used his move to pin him. The boy had won the match and the tournament. He was the champion. On the way home, the boy and sensei reviewed every move in each and every match. Then the boy summoned the courage to ask what was really on his mind. Sensei, how did I win the tournament with only one move? You won for two reasons, the sensei answered. First, you've almost mastered one of the most difficult throws in all of judo. And second, 
the only known defense for that move is for your opponent to grab your left arm. The boy's biggest weakness had become his biggest strength. Man, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> right. Throw some karate in there. <laughs> okay, let's get back to our point. There. All right. Number All right. five. Number five. Start where <coughs> you are. All right, so let me just tell you, I actually was talking to a young lady um, the other day. And we were going through and just kind of, um, you know, she was just asking for some guidance where she's at in her business. And, um, and, you know, it hit home for me because I think I was explaining to her that sometimes we get so overwhelmed where we're, I don't know if anybody can, you know, experience this, that maybe you've gotten so far behind as far as organization. Maybe you're not an organized person. Maybe you have so many contacts, um, pieces of paper, survey sheets, you, you just have notebooks with phone numbers or whatever. And so you never really organize. And sometimes when you feel so overwhelmed, you, you're like, I don't even know where to go, where to begin. Even like if you look at an office or a room, you know, if you see a mess and you're like, you know what, I don't even want to deal with it. I'll deal with it later, right? And then sometimes later never comes. Later turns into a week, it turns into a month, it turns into a year, and then eventually it doesn't even ever get done. Okay. I don't know if anybody can deal with that or has can relate to that. But what I explained to her is that you know what, just where are you now? Start now. So that means if you get a new number now, call that number now and create a system that works for you. I gave her now, if you have a system, great, stick to it. But I said, hey, for example, this is what I'm doing. Have a notebook designated specifically for contacts, only that notebook, no notes, nothing just for contacts. What I do is put those names on that notebook. And then what happens is if I reach out to them and if they don't respond back to me, I don't know if anybody had that where you reach out to them and they don't respond back to you. After so many attempts, maybe three to four attempts, that's it. Cross their name out. They don't even go in your phone, right? So that's how I'm doing it. And what the, maybe the final call would be is like something like, hey, you know, hey, Samuel, you know, I've been reaching out to you. I've been calling you. This is like the third or fourth time. I hope everything is okay. You know, I know we talked about a business expansion. You said you seemed like you were interested. Um, at this point in time, I'm too busy to keep calling. So at this point, I'm going to have to go ahead and throw away your number. You have my number now. When you're interested, you give me a call and cross their number out. You're done, right? So that now, if they respond, then they get carried over to another system, whether it's an index card. For me, I put it on my phone. And I, you could put a P next to it. You can put P-R-O-S. So this way you wanna start like follow up Fridays or whatever, you can just go PROS. If you sit in the doctor's office or whatever, you can, all those are your prospects and you can literally just reach out to them one at a time, okay? So that's an idea as far as a system. Don't feel like you got to get organized before you do anything. Start where you are and little by little start creating that system. Go back a little because if, like for us, we've been in the business years and years. So if you've been in the business over a year, I can imagine if you haven't stayed, created a system that you could probably feel overwhelmed, right? So don't, like I said, don't let that stop you, okay? So that, with that being said, again, start where you are. So the next one and the final one is find your reason why. This is super, super important. In fact, we're going to share another video of, of a powerful reason why. And we talk about this all the time. And we're going to share that right now with you guys, which is going to be huge in explaining how impactful this is for you. Can you see the video? You see the video okay? Sweet. Okay. This is the story of a young boy who lives with his elderly mother. She loved to play the piano and wanted him to learn because it brought her so much joy. When he agreed, she sent him to a local piano teacher. Every other evening at the same time, she walked him to his lessons. But soon it became obvious that the boy wasn't doing too well. A few weeks pass, and his mother continues taking him to class, even though the teacher has started to lose faith in the boy. 
Nevertheless, the teacher pressed on. One day, the teacher was preparing some sheet music for the boy. And when it was time to start the lesson, the boy didn't show. A couple weeks passed, but the boy never comes back. Sometime later, the piano teacher is the proud host of the town's yearly classical concert. He sticks posters around town to attract guests to this special night of music. It's not long until the young boy emerges. Seeing his teacher and one of the posters fixed to a nearby tree, he is filled with excitement. He rips the poster down and chases after his teacher. The boy wants to join so badly, he starts to beg. And finally, the teacher reluctantly agrees, deciding to let the boy play a small part to close the concert. The next evening was time for the big event. Good evening, folks. Good evening. As the evening got underway, the teacher proudly invites the first act to the stage. The night was going as planned, and it was soon time for the final act. Here it is. Without further ado, it's uh, young Alex. The young boy took to the stage after a nervous introduction by his teacher, and the audience grew silent eager for his performance. He played beautifully. Straight away, his teacher was stunned. The audience sat silent, amazed by the talent of this young boy. As the boy finished, the audience erupted in a standing ovation. He gave the best performance of the evening. His teacher applauded with surprise and then asked, how did you learn to play so brilliantly? The boy took a moment and then said, my mom loved to play the piano. She wanted me to learn too. But when she got sick, there was no one to take me to my lessons anymore. I had to take care of her. The teacher knelt beside the boy, and the audience listened in silence as he continued. She passed away this morning. She was deaf before, so couldn't hear me play. But I know she's listening now, and I only want to do my best. At first, you may not be talented or gifted. You may even be doubted by the people around you. But if you have a strong enough why, you will be able to achieve anything. <laughs> All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that because that was pretty powerful. I know we saw that. You can see that screen. No. Okay. So, and I, and just in closing, my R Y, I kind of wanted to share. This is something that I did because one of the things I stare at the most is my phone. And my phone now, my the picture I have is my Y. I put my Y on my my screensaver, which is my grandbabies, my family you know, things that are passionate to me, you know, a, a organization, a, a charity that at my church, um, single mom movement, being debt free. So I put that. So every time I look at my phone, my screensaver, I'm going to be looking at my why so that I am motivated to do something when I don't feel like it. So with that being said, I hope you guys got something out of tonight and you're going to be focused so you can make big things happen in your business. All right, you want to close it out? Go ahead and close it out. Guys, thank you for being on the call. Look, it's just about going into action. It's focusing on that one thing this week that's going to get you to the next spot. If you think you're not doing it right or you're having troubles, get someone else to help you. Record yourself and let someone else listen to how you're asking people to be your customer, how you're talking people and peeking them. Get it fixed now. 
That way you can never, ever say that it didn't work for me because you was uncoachable. All right. Thank you, guys. You guys, God bless. Bye. Tomorrow morning, 9 a.m.